Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial for JC Player Inventory. My name's Jack, I'm going to be taking you through on how to add JC Inventory into a custom pawn, a pawn that is not the JC Inventory character. So for the example, I'm using the first person template. And as you can see, I haven't got any function on the by function, which is kind of fun, but I haven't, I can't pick up an item, I can kind of kick them I guess, but that's about it. Okay. So, uh, what I need to do is lift the correct code, and there's not a whole lot uh, from the JC inventory character into my pawn that I want to add that interaction to. So, it's basically, I'm just going to save all. Um, it's a fresh project, I've just um, brought in the other project in and kind of opened some windows to make it a bit easier. Okay, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open the JC player character. And the first thing I'm doing with the pawn is creating my player inventory. Uh, and I've got a few functions there um, that are sort of settable. Uh, how many columns, how many rows, you can change that dynamically. Um, the item width and height, which is kind of, you know, I find 38 looks quite good, but it's subjective, so I left it open. Um, and then, of course, I, I do want to set a reference to it, and I do want that to be replicated. So let's just have a look at that reference. It's got simple replication there and that, that's all there is to it. So let's open our first person controller, sorry, first person character blueprint. And I don't know if it comes off the bat with a big in play. I don't think it does. Let's let's just see. It doesn't. Okay, big in play. And because I'm in 4.7, I reckon I can lift this code. Uh, pretty easily and pop it into my system and then just look at that create that as a variable so all I did there was right click it and obviously it didn't exist in this context I made it a, va a variable and I just want to make it replicated so just like that for sanity we'll just keep it nice and clean um, so all my variables there, obviously, and I'm ready to go. Switch has authority. Obviously, we uh, we want to spawn this actor on the server. It is replicated, so it will um, it will also be on the client after it's spawned. We don't want to spawn many instances on it on every client. Uh, we'll have the client do that. Um, so that's why that's there. So that code is finished. The next thing we want to do is we want to make a new graph. And call it RPC graph. Uh, and we're going to be copying and pasting some code straight into uh, straight into this. So we're going to come back to our JC inventory character, um, and we're going to go to its RPC graph. And there's a few different ways to do this. Copy and pasting blueprints um, is a little bit more complex than copy and pasting straight. C++ code, for instance, uh, because, you know, it's all context sensitive and, um, you know, they've got to have references to, to what they're doing. So, for example, if I, I just lifted all this code straight away, um, this function is calling this. If I copy and paste them at the same time, maybe I'll have problems, maybe I won't. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I am going to do it the safe way. So, the way I would do that is I want to get all the custom events before I paste in the custom functions. So, to do that, and really... Um, I'm just going to the reason uh, it's set up like this is because um, of replication uh, replication or RPCs can only be executed on net owners and uh, a player character is a net owner so uh, individual um, containers in the world obviously are not net owners because they're not uh, deriv they're not um, in the same chain as, as a player controller, it means that we need to, to route all functionality through uh, through a net owner and, and we can do validation checks and things like that on it. Um, so that's why you absolutely need these functions. Um, just like that. And we've even copied, uh, pasted the comments just for a bit of easy use. Now, important step, um, compile that 
because these need to be registered. So now, you know, we've got use item. Well, if I could spell use item RPC. Uh, and I hope, <laughs> I hope I've got my video player set up so you guys can see that, but you're not missing out on too much if you're not. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to be pretty clever about this. If we select them all, maybe we can lift their formatting as well. Um, I don't know if I said it before. I've done this a bunch of time, guys, and I, I think I've worked out the laziest way to do it. You, you don't even have to really look at the code you're pasting. These are all just functions that you absolutely need for the system to work. Um, it's all constructed on interfaces, so it will work with any pawn. Um, but those interfaces need to be able to... Well, they, they need to do something. Okay, I've accidentally copied that comment there. and I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> because I don't want to unselect everything and select it all again. I'm just going to select it here. And there we go. Uh, and it looks like it's worked quite well, which is good. I'm just going to put it with the right formatting now. There we go. And did I miss anything? No, that's kind of a little bit ugly. There we go. Um, I'm done. Okay, fantastic. Um, Let's just have a look at the JC player character in the event graph and make sure we're not missing anything. So we can have a look at all the functions it's got and straight away you'll see that obviously E, interact, it could be binded to a property object, it's not in this case because it was just a simple example. Um, that's doing some some uh, code that I wrote very quickly, it's just a quick eye trace and there should be probably a branch there, although I guess I, this cast is kind of making up for it there um, and then we call get hard create item container window I'll go through those sort of steps in another tutorial let's just keep focused here we'll go to I um, obviously pretty important I is opening up the um, the inventory screen so very simple code there I'll just go through it very quickly um, we're going to get the controller and cast it to a player controller. Um, then we're going to get the HUD and we're going to get user interface widget uh, and show hide the inventory. And it's set to toggle. Uh, you can also set show or hide and keep toggle unclicked. But toggle is nice because it means that if we click I, it will show. If we click I again, it will not show. Um, so it's just a ease of use kind of thing. Let's go ahead and drop that into our code. Done deal. Okay. What else might we need? Interact would be pretty helpful, I'm imagining. Um, but there's a fair amount of uh, code attached to this, and I'll explain it to another, uh, in another video. Uh, the only important thing to know is uh, this is replicated on the server, so you know people can't cheat and just kind of add items out of thin air. Um, is this this function here RPC add item to uh, inventory interface and it's RPC um, so here we're just going to get the item data from the item that we've casted to and found and uh, we're going to get the amount and add it in just in case it's a box of ammunition or what or whatnot then we're going to destroy the actor um, so pretty simple code and I am just going to lift that um, I don't have my eye trace macro though, and that could be a problem. So let's just expand that node and <laughs> bring it back down to earth, maybe. <laughs> and you can see uh, that this this you know this raycast is nothing special. It's just I guess I'm a stickler for uh, clean code. Oh look at that! It's even. missing some important bits when I unpacked it. Oh. Yeah, 
get control rotation, not controller. And we'll just plug that in there. Um, okay. And we should be able to just steal that code. Um, so I just wanted to point out that, that this kind of code would generally be different game to game. Um, you can use this as a base point, but I assume you'll probably already have an interact key and you might want to do it with interfaces. I know that um, in my own impl implementation, I've actually put in the, the base class of the item um, sort of a player interact, which is how I interact with doors and whatever else. Uh, on an interface, you know, is a much cleaner way than casting, um, you know, just better code practices uh, that that will execute um, at the end of the day. The, the, the thing that's important is this command that we're adding it to the inventory and then we remove it. So that's that would be a nice way to do it. Um, I'm happy to share that code if, if there's interest for it. It's not very complicated. Um, okay, so attempt pickup. We've got that working on the server. Uh, we need to call that, obviously. So I'm not going to write new code. No need to reinvent the wheel. Um, we're just going to lift that straight out. The only sad thing, of course, is we don't have the eye trace. So it's, it's not going to be a happy bunny about that. Um, so the first thing we want to do is attempt this on the server and that's, you know, to pick up items. The rest of this is all client side stuff. Um, it is, you know, do we, do we create an item container and an item container is kind of like a backpack or, um, you know, a, a locker or maybe a dead body or something <laughs> more sinister. Um, and we're, th once again, this is really direct code. We're just, you know, saying we're just trying to cast it and if it is one, then we'll do it. Um, how about I just lift this code again? Probably don't need to test all those things. And that any formatting. <laughs> there we go. Just clean it up just a little bit. Now it's not really important for the sake of this example, but it is good for mental sanity. <laughs> okay, so um, first thing we do, we attempt the pickup which just runs um, uh, the pickup code on the on the server and then we're going to see if we're looking at a container. Um, all good. We don't need to worry about this this section uh, executing on the server, and um, because it's it's calling HUD. And this is all client side, so it's not going to matter. Okay, so I don't know what's the chances that that's worked without any testing on the way. Let's find out, shall we? Uh, if I click I, <laughs> well, I've got an inventory screen. I'll have to go back and see what that's happened. Can misinformation there. Um, I just had to check my notes. Uh, all you need to do is there was one more uh, uh, sort of a function that I missed and that was uh, a return function interface get player JC inventory call and the widgets obviously use this to to pull information about the um, the player's inventory so it can display it on the screen. Uh, obviously very important. Um, the HUD the HUD code, provided you want to use this HUD, uh, or you could implement this one line of code into your HUD and it'd be no problem. Um, it already fires the command set up player item sheet and the player item sheet is does need to be set up, um, but that code's already there for you uh, in the HUD. So you do need to, coming back to first person character, you'll find it over here in the interfaces list get player JC inventory core and you just want to grab this out and say yep I would like to use that please and I'll just replace it so you can see what I've done and there you go and okay so now the um, so now the sort of display widgets can uh, pull information about the inventory 
that I have, as well as other, you know, game logic, it might be important. And, you know, I've got a little gun. I equipped it. Right now, nothing's going to happen um, that I haven't equipped it. Uh, that would, once again, tie into your game logic. Um, not really in the scope of this video, but let's just have a quick look at how I set that up. And it's super simple code. Um, this is going to fire if you change your slot, player, equip, slot, change. Um, and it's just going to check we're on the server. And we're going to find what changed, what slot, what's its name, you know, what, what was it, what item was it. Uh, and then this is a really quick example. We're going to say, well, it's in the right hand, left hand, you know, akimbo Uzis or something. Uh, and we're just going to check, ah, uh, well, we'll send it to, you know, the, the equipped guns or whatever, whatever's in there is going to be set. And, um, and that will all work. Obviously, uh, you know, depending on your game, you'd have different logic here. Maybe you've got resistances in your armor, and when you put on armor, it's going to add resistance to, I don't know, ballistics or something like that. Maybe it's going to add 10, um, I don't know, strength points or something like that. Um, that's where your logic would go. Uh, okay. So, once again, that's how you would implement the code into... Um, another pawn. So the, really the most important thing here is these RPC functions. They absolutely need to be in your pawn. Everything in the event graph uh, other than begin play spawn it, um, spawn, the, spawn the inventory which is here. That needs to be in there. But uh, everything else that's additional. You know what key you've binded it to, how that works, that's up to you. Um, you know, pickups, how you're handling them. This is a ray trace pickup. Do you want to use an orb and pick up the item that way or some sort of um, spherical trace? Do you have pickups? Maybe you just walk over a pickup and it adds it to your inventory. You know, whatever you want, really. Uh, you can use the JC inventory characters reference. I'll wrap it up there before I blab on too much. I hope that was helpful. And thank you again.